Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the latest update on what is going on with number two. If you remember, it was a one early October. That way, you know what to expect. Plus, what's coming later in the MDR after Isaac, which is northern Atlantic. Don't worry about it. Plus, we have Joyce down here. Don't worry about Joyce neither. And this Invest 90L. This one more likely will get turned to the west, trending that it will be a little bit further potentially to the west. But then we have another one that's coming off the coast of Africa. This one is going to go a little bit further. Other than that, we have what's going on still in the Gulf of Mexico. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. I always showed my subscribers what's going on, not only with other hurricanes, but with Helene about a month ago, how this was going, coming to our Gulf of Mexico. And we had a second one. It was always late September, early October. But the one thing is, the one early October... It was a little bit further towards the east, and it always trended that way. Maybe somewhere is right here. If you take a look, you can see Central America. And if you look northern, you see how that shows Florida, the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And then anything east of that would be either the western Caribbean, central to western Caribbean, or over here off the southeast of the lower 48. And that's very important. You know that area that is showing mostly that maybe this area, a little east of this marker, versus being right on this marker, just like what we had with, with Helene. That's very important, because what I'm going to show you, you need to see. So here we are now at the latest outlook. There might be another one coming up shortly. If it's any different, I will throw it in the video. Just showing that it's still up to 50% in the next seven days, nothing in the next 48 hours. As a matter of fact, a lot of the energy is going west, and what's left is going to go east. And what's going to be over here is what's going to grow potentially from this invest, maybe a little bit later, nothing really close. But what comes after that invest could be a very strong hurricane as well as what's going on with this invest as well. Very strong hurricane. Matter of fact, the update just come out and they still have it at 50%. And it appears conducive for gradual development. A tropical depression could form around the middle part of the week while it meanders towards the west-northwest. This system is then expected to move north-northwestward into the Gulf of Mexico during a later portion of this week. So I'll keep you updated. Of course, you know the pattern that we're looking at. I think we're going to be seeing this turn soon and it won't show it into the center of the Gulf. We will see. And you can see now they have that disturbance I was telling you about. It has 20% chance already. This is the one that's going to mingle a little bit and could potentially come further into the Eastern Caribbean, maybe even further. So far, it shows that the high pressure in the Atlantic, it's an Azores high, so it's over here. It's going to be retracting back. It's not a Bermuda high, but if it was a Bermuda high, it could always change. It's down a road. A Bermuda high would carry it further to the west. So I'll keep you updated. So first, let's talk about what's happened to everyone else. Let's not forget who's still impacted from Helene. 2.7 million people still without power right now. And you can see the states and the numbers. There's just a lot of people without power, a lot of homes without power. So if you put two, three people per home, you're talking about millions still. Now, what you're looking at here is from National Weather Service. And it's actually a three-day rainfall total and you can see everyone that's included this is not storm surge just the rainfall and you can see how north carolina really got it the worst over two feet of rain have come down so here we are with another short range so you can see what's coming next is your potential velocity anomaly and you can see where we had the leftover remnants of helene and remember we did follow that all the way down for six weeks and it did show true but remember if you're from my channel that the next grouping was going to be further to the east. It was not going to be a double bang into the Gulf of Mexico. What is coming next is going to be through a weaker environment. Not a lot of lift in the atmosphere. Now you can see this is your MJO. Just lets us know when we have all this lift coming in from the Pacific over our region. This is where we had that strong lift. Remember it was Eastern Pacific stretching to the Gulf. Helene tapped into this, and that's what helped Helene ta uh, intensify, as a matter of fact, is the fast-forward movement. It didn't have time to upwell all the cooler temperatures after it got off the loop current, and it just danced on those warm temperatures on the top surface, moving down the street before it could even feel the effects of the cold water. That's why Helene intensified. It was a lot of lift. Now, as you can see now, all the way until the 26th, it's a weak amount of lift, but still enough to get some storms. Something could get brewing. And as we go by the 3rd of October, that's going to be pushing east. 
We're going to start going into unfavorable environment pushing in from the west. We're going to be unfavorable, but not favorable. Just a neutral phase passing by past the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. The western side is going to be unfavorable. We do have a cold front coming. And a favorable environment really loses its grip. And as you go through the very first week of October all the way to the 6th, unfavorable environment moving through. Remember, if you've been a follower of my channel, you know that this was going to be a very serious impact. But right after this impact, we are going to potentially go into a break. I hope you remember that. Now, we still have tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa every three days. Actually, when you get to September, it becomes a little bit closer than three days. But they come off a lot. So you can see all the way from the beginning of October all the way to the middle of October, they're showing chances for these tropical waves that comes off the coast of Africa to flare up as it potentially goes into the eastern Pacific or potentially start forming up in the western Caribbean going into the Gulf of Mexico. So we need to watch for this pattern a few times still. There's going to be some... Weak scenarios that's going to be passing by. I'm not seeing, seeing no intensifying hurricane like we had with Helene. I did see past videos, and no, I'm not showing any of that to be true. Matter of fact, if you look at the comparison and look at the data, you can see the pattern we're going into. And I hopefully, right after this video, so will you. And no, I did not mean to make that <laughs> rhyme in any way. I just just felt it from the heart. Hopefully you will know what's going on after this video. Now, if you look what I'm talking about, like I did in the beginning of the video, you have Central America and right to the east of Central America is Florida. So you know if something's going on the eastern side of your Gulf of Mexico, the center side of your Gulf of Mexico, you can see all the information that is available. Now, when you go by your potential velocity anomaly, you can see what's going on in the area. We do have lift. We do have favorable environment. Matter of fact, if you've never been here before, this anomaly right here, we had one right next to it. This was Helene, and we've been following this whole group of lift ever since it was way down here, and I've been updating it ever since. So if it was to come true now, late September, we've seen it as far as early November, months ahead of time. So people did know about Helene potentially coming months ahead of time. I did see some information from the media. You really can't trust them anymore. It's a shame. But a lot of people said that they had no heads up on this one. Make sure you subscribe. I stay ahead of the weather pattern. I do long range. I deal with data. Data goes into the model runs. The models don't rule your forecast. But once again, if you look here, you can see where you're at. Here's Eastern Central America. This would be by Florida, correct? Eastern Gulf of Mexico. This would be into our Gulf of Mexico. And if you keep following this up, you will see that the next one that we're dealing with, with all this favorable lift, is going to be on the eastern side of Florida, potentially by the Bahamas or the east coast. We've got to watch out for. But what this means is that this system is going to be going into a trough. We're going to be having that trough come in, and this is going to get pulled out to the east, northeast. And as it goes by, Florida is going to start strengthening as it leaves. So maybe a strong tropical depression, maybe even a weak tropical storm will come by and affect Florida as it goes into the Atlantic. No, no intensifying great hurricane. I don't even think a hurricane. If it does not come on that trough and it does not get pushed out in time and it comes slower, maybe a little bit later because that's also a possibility. Well, instead of getting pushed out on the eastern side of that trough, it would get pulled back to the west because you have a high ridge on both sides. And that high ridge is what allows it to come north. So that would affect Louisiana, Mississippi, northern Gulf of Mexico. So that's where that comes into play. As far as Texas, only way you would come into play, Texas, is if the storm was slow and the jet stream was slow. And it gets pulled even further to the west towards you on the other side of the high ridge of that trough, if that makes sense to you. My point is... You can see where this one's going to be more favorable going east, right around the Florida area and going east. I want to show you some information as well. After this one, what is next? So you can see that after that, we're going to go through a period. We're going to go through a calm period in the Gulf of Mexico. You're starting to see what I see now. After that, maybe something weak passing through while we have something weak potentially into the Caribbean all the way to the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. That's why you see on global tropics, something could still happen all the way to the middle of October. We see how much weaker the favorable environment is going to be in. After that, 
go into another break as we go from the end of October towards almost the beginning of November. Then, unfortunately, I'm still showing as we go through November, we're going to go through another period of our hurricane season where things are going to be forming up, potentially coming into our Gulf of Mexico, maybe even our eastern Gulf of Mexico, or maybe even forming up right off the coast of Florida, going into the Atlantic with both of those. So that's what we have coming next. And that's what we have now. So hopefully I explained this to you a little bit where you understand. Matter of fact, if you take a look at the latest control member with the euro, it's still the same thing I showed days ago, that potentially to the east of Central America is where all this convection is going to be from this favorable environment for something to form up. This right here would not be from something going into the Gulf of Mexico. This right here would be from that trough coming through. Can't see it with that one. Got that trough coming through. Pushing a system that's forming up as it goes eastward. Also could be interacting with that wave coming after that invest. And them two together could make something that we need to watch. It could get a little bit closer to the west. Depends how deep that trough goes. It could be further to the east and not even get close to lower 48, but it would affect a lot of people in the Caribbean. So, of course, I'm going to keep you updated, but I just want you to know what I know. Now, still, even though we had Helene, you can see there's just not a lot of temperature missing out of the Gulf of Mexico. Matter of fact, we're still a little bit above average, but mostly average to going below average because Helene did take a lot of the heat out of the Gulf, but there's still a lot there. There's still way enough heat for something to strengthen and do something still. So that's not a factor. So what you got to do is go by the data and see what's going on. So when you look by the data, you can see according to the Euro, what's going on with our Arctic Oscillation, that we actually have a cold front that is coming through. This cold front is going to create a trough, is going to bend our jet stream. And if you look at your East Pacific Oscillation, you can also see that we're going into a high ridge on the west coast. This would put a trough towards the center to the east coast. It's always on the opposite unless you have those special case scenarios. And you can see this by looking at your NAO, your North Atlantic Oscillation, that you're going to be going into a trough on the eastern side, and you're going to be going into a ridge on the western side. So that trough would put that scenario to carry that all to the east and not into our Gulf of Mexico and do a stall like you see with only the GFS. Matter of fact, when you look at the GFS, on your chances to get uh, that ridge off the west coast. GFS don't see that, but it is trending, and the euro does see it. Now, even though the euro was a little late coming around to the party, matter of fact, last two times, euro a little late to the party, but at the same time, you got to remember, the euro did show us this anomaly coming for six weeks so we can get ready for it. So Euro is not a bad model. Now, for those that don't know, this is why that is very important. Because as you can see here, you're getting that ridge, that very high ridge that I showed you. This is where the cool air is coming in the beginning of October. Then you get in that trough right around the southeast. Just now it gets towards our Gulf of Mexico as we go by the 4th and 5th. Now we're in the pattern. Now we have that ridge setting up. We have that trough setting up. And as we go later, that deepens. The ridge deepens, the trough deepens, keeping anything away from this Gulf of Mexico. If it comes into the Gulf, it's going to get pushed to the east. It's going to be so much getting pushed to the east that the shear is going to shear it very rough on the northern and western side. That would weaken that storm as it gets pushed away. The only way it could do what the GFS is showing, if you go all the way to the 10 days, Showing that after it passes and you get that trough, if it gets pushed down here and stalls in the Caribbean, then it can go to the west on this high pull that's afterwards. This is all the way by the 8th and the 9th, and every model is showing that it's going to be fast moving and it's going to be through by then. So when you go by comparison, GFS, the only model that's showing the worst case scenario, and you should watch videos that only show the GFS. There's something behind that. You can see right here with the GFS showing that it will start forming up in the Gulf by the 5th, not by the 1st or 2nd or even the 3rd when you have that zonal flow. And you can see at the same time it's showing that that 
The ridge is starting to set in, but it's very weak. And that trough that's coming in is not a strong trough. It's more like a little short wave trough. But you can see it down here trying to form up something. Now this is giving it space to potentially head a little further to the north because of that. Letting it come all the way in. You're getting your little range trough bringing it to the east, northeast. So it, it, it not looking like it would be Texas. I mean, the only way would be later. You can see that. But my point is you can see a zonal flow, barely any ridge at all, all the way to the 7th. And as that goes to the east, look, still. And finally gets a little kink and a little ridge. And, and that's it. That is it. Now, when you go try and find a third one, you try and find a trend. Trends are your friend when the models disagree. And you can see right here with the Canadian showing like any other model all the way to the second and third. Yeah, there's a zonal flow, but the wave isn't expected until the third, fourth, and beyond. Showing that right after, we are going to get that high ridge. We are going to get that deep trough. And it's going to be pushing this to the east. It's not going to sit there and stall it and impact it where it can do anything. It's just going to get pushed in the east. Be dominated by the high ridge and that deep trough. Now, this is also bringing some shear. You can see this with the Euro. That as it tries to form up and head north into the Gulf of Mexico, it gets sheared greatly because of that trough. It would not be able to be, you know, intensifying hurricane like I'm sure y'all been told. You can see right here with GFS, worst case scenario, shows that it does have space because it's not such a deep trough and it can go north and not get a lot of shear. That's why you're seeing a strengthening system. So when you check chances for a tropical depression, you can see this, how all this gets bottled up. You get that trough starts building up. All the energy bottles up to the eastern Pacific. That storm forms in the eastern Pacific, gives it a lot of good strength. It starts moving out. Then we're coming into that trough period where things can go to the east, northeast. And you can see the weakness thereof of something straight getting pushed that way. And you can also see that if it does not take that and it goes slower, our trough is going to be moving a little bit further to the east. And this is where it could get pulled a little bit to the north on the western side of that trough. So you have two different directions. It could come early, which is more likely going to do, be something very weak, maybe a strong tropical depression, maybe even a weak tropical storm. It would be fast moving. Or it could be later and go northern the Gulf of Mexico. Now, just because it's later, I don't mean it'd be an intensifying Helene. Remember that. I'm literally showing you a 10-day outlook. Now, you can see everything that I'm telling you by looking at it here in increments. So, as you go five and six days, you can see how most of the energy got dumped into the eastern Pacific, and it's actually another tropical wave, a second tro tropical wave that's going to get pulled up. Then, as we start getting that trough, it's going to go out to the east, north, east now if it misses that trough getting pulled out it will get blocked by that trough right at 10 days then it can start headed to the north right in the gulf it won't have a lot of time to form by then but still we'll watch it and see what comes out of it at the same time you can see that next wave that comes past that invest as the invest starts curving to the north we have another wave that's going to be passing to the west and that's what's coming into our Caribbean as we go by the 10th of October. We need to watch out for showing this could be a lot of strength. This is where a lot of that favorable environment is. Remember, everything stronger was to the east. So you can see this here when you look at your cyclone locations on your ensembles all the way up for the next five days. You can see how everything passes over. It will be something building up into the eastern Pacific. But this is where something that can either form up in the southern Gulf. Or you could be dealing with this group of ensembles over here where something could strengthen up real quick. Tropical depression, maybe even a weak tropical storm and zing away shortly after that with that group of storms. That is your grouping. If it misses that trough after you go six and seven days, then it's going to be this next group of storms that's going to be headed to the north, potentially northeast. You can see that how it gets pulled out to the east, northeast chances for a, tr a tropical storm, maybe even a strong tropical storm. But once it misses that trough, then it gets pulled up to the north with a group. So it's multiple chances of systems, maybe even multiple chances of two 
that we need to watch out for. You can see that here, and the second one's showing some good strength on that one, so we definitely need to watch it. So as we go by the latest information, you can see here by the euro, as you literally go six days out, is all the way into the 4th of October, that we do get a lot of lift over here. We get that formation in Eastern Pacific. We get a lot stronger to the east. But at the same time, you can see any kind of formation coming out of that as you get in that trough will be something very weak. Maybe a group of disorganized thunderstorms, maybe even a tropical depression that tries to form up past Florida to the east. And at the same time, you see maybe a second one. This potentially could keep going on for the first week, maybe even the first 10 days of October. This could continually keep trying to form. Now, when you look with the control member uh, of the euro, it goes further down the road. And you can see in five days, you see almost the same information showing that could possibly go right into the Gulf of Mexico as we go six, seven days away. Then right after that, get pushed to the east. It is something very weak. It is something very sheared. And it's not really a big threat. This is going to bring some flooding rain on that strength as that comes by and then strengthens up to the east and maybe be a threat towards the northeast. So we'll keep an eye out for you guys over there just in case this comes right up the coast. I think we can potentially see that. It could come right up the coast and strengthen up or be right offshore and strengthen up. So I will keep my eyes on it. And you can see that next one coming off after that invest could potentially clip the Lesser Antilles, the Eastern Caribbean. And you know it's after it invest. Because this is so far away. This is October 10th and October 11th. So when you go by the AI of the Euro, you can see the same environment. Might even get low pressure over here by the Western Gulf of Mexico. Not a system, but a group of disorganized thunderstorms might bring y'all a little bit of rainfall towards the coast. So that'd be good for y'all as that goes further towards the east. And then once again, your favorable environment. And you can see how big and strong this thing becomes out here to the east. So you can see this in the Gulf, very weak, very sheared, and going out. And then we have that other one coming by the Eastern Caribbean as we go by the 10th of October. So I'm gonna keep going. So I want y'all to be really at ease. That's why I'm speaking a little slower. Sorry for the longer video. I just wanna make sure you know what's coming around the corner. We don't have an intensifying major hurricane in the Gulf. I'm not gonna show you just a GFS that would be wrong that'd be uh trying to push a little bit of fear for views in my opinion i'm gonna show you here with the canadian here's another model pretty good model most of the time it tries to show maybe a tropical depression turn into a tropical storm potentially this is one that showed a bad scenario a few days ago that's why i took a break for a few days get a little closer to this because this is literally five six days down the road still have time look at this showing maybe a tropical storm maybe will come across. So now I'm gonna show you on the GFS, which was showed to you as a worst case scenario, just so you can show that my data and my forecast is correct. That actually, as it starts building up towards the third, the fourth, the fifth, this is when we have strong shear. This would not be a strong system, but you can look at the zero Z and GFS is all by itself, bringing a hurricane on in towards Florida, almost the exact same spot as Helene. Now, when you go by the six Z, the latest update, Look how, how many low pressures, <laughs> just the whole area. It has a little bit of favorable environment. That's it. It's got unfavorable. It's going to be pushing through. This is about a third. This is right where it starts to get weaker. And you can see that the system's really weakened down. We might even get two named systems real quick, little tropical depressions that flare up and that go away. That's just going to bring you some precipitation. It's going to be so much uh, troughing so much shear with this it's not gonna be easy to form even try another one look at it. over and over trying to flare up one after another none of those are stronger than a tropical depression maybe a strong tropical depression but i'm showing less and less and less that's my point now the invest in mdr will be our next one which will be kirk that's the invest 90 l and if anything forms up after that unfortunately it would be leslie and the reason why i say unfortunately there's been some big male names, but the female name storms really are pretty big and rough. Thank you for your time, everybody. Hope you have a great day today. Hopefully you've shared this information to another, or at least hit the like button, show support. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Remember, I will keep you updated. This is the next 48 hours of 
any storms in your area as you can see it's just now dissipating for today and it's going to be gone and there's not really anything happening for a minute now before i go first corinthians 15 52 through 58 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Have a great evening, everybody. Please don't worry about this setup. I will keep you updated. I think the best case scenario for these tropical waves will be maybe a couple of tropical depressions coming out of that, maybe even a weak tropical storm, bringing some winds and maybe some heavy rainfall. I'm not seeing no big devastation coming your way. And I'm, I'm sorry that some of you out there are thinking that. A lot of you out there, I've seen the comments, you're scared. And I'm sorry, that's totally uncalled for. You should always be seen by multiple models, not just the worst case scenario. Hope you have a great evening. And I'll see you again tomorrow. I don't even think an afternoon update is needed today. God bless you all. And remember, all glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life. And everyone that is around you. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. See you all on a sea of glass. <laughs> Look it up. You'll know what I mean. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you in the morning.